Robin, when you came to LA, what was the first role that you booked and where were you in your life? Oh, well, uh, the first job that I ever got when I came to Los Angeles was on a television series with Lloyd Bridges. Do you remember who Lloyd Bridges is? He was on Sea Hunt and, um, and I used to watch him as a little girl and I, I got it. First of all, I arrived in Los Angeles with $45 in cash, a proof sheet with headshots and a free place to stay. And, I, uh, and the girl that I was staying with, her family was in the fine art business. And uh, I needed, you know, she was wonderful and I loved living with her, but I needed to be around people who were in the show business. So I had been going to a school, found a job, uh, or said to my teacher, I'm going to find a place in Hollywood to live because my girlfriend lived in Echo Park, got a job, I mean, got, found a place with one of his other students, then got this job at this hamburger stand, then moved from the hamburger stand up to this place called Simply Blues, which is still, I mean, the, building, the building's still there. It's right at the corner of Sunset and Vine. And I had gotten a job as a cocktail waitress. And um, so I had, back then, um, uh, I, you didn't have cell phones and texting and all of that. You had an answering service or your home phone. And so I had gotten, a lot of guys would ask for my phone number and, and sometimes I would give them my phone number and sometimes I would give them my answering service number. Just, I wasn't, you know, I just didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings and it seemed much easier than saying no. And um, so uh, I had gotten a call on my answering service from this man named Roe Wallerstein and I thought maybe he was one of those fellas, you know? So I didn't, and the third time he called, he said, Robin, this is uh, Roe Wallerstein. I'm over here at Warner Brothers. Larry, the guy you used to work for at the hamburger stand, handed out your picture in the commissary and I have an audition for you. If you don't call me back, the train is going to have left the station. Well, I am over the moon, as you can imagine. And I go to my boss and I've just, uh, you know, I've just started my shift and I say, listen, the, um, I have this audition, it's right over the hill at Warner Brothers, you know, Sunset and Vine, Warner Brothers right over here. I can go up Highland, I'll be back before the crowd even starts. And he looks at me and he says, if you leave, you don't got a job. And I looked at him for one unbelieving moment, untied my apron and said, well, I didn't come here to be a waitress. I've got to give this a try, you know? And, uh, and off I went. And the part was so small that I actually had to read another character's lines because my character didn't have that many lines, but it was a week's work and it was on a national television show and it got me my SAG card and it was great. And the thing that was so wonderful about it was that it was, I had to take, it was a risk because I, I don't think, I, I don't even know if I got, I think I didn't lose that job. I oh. think they, I did go back a little bit later and um, for a little while, but, uh, you know, I had to take, I had to bet on me. And anybody who comes to Hollywood is betting on themselves. You know, I didn't want to be afraid. I didn't want to think, well, I can get another job as a waitress, certainly. I did think that, that even if I lose this job and don't get that job, I'm going to be fine because I can always get a job somewhere that pays the rent, so. And how long had you been here? I arrived on tax day, April 15th, very close to the time that we're doing this interview. Um, and uh, let's see, and I got my first job in August. Oh, wow, okay. I landed an agent. Uh, by May or June, I had an agent. And by August, I had my first job. Wow, wow, that's, that, I mean, that's really quick. Yeah. A lot of people stay here a lot longer. And I just wanna get back to the whole uh, thought about you came here not to be a waitress or a receptionist or whatever, you know, fill in the blank. Right. You know, I, I hear from a lot of actors that they, they need these jobs, obviously, because first of all, it's expensive too, to be in acting, to headshots and yeah. all these things. If, any advice for someone that is in a similar position? Because sure, this part-time job is just to, to sustain them, but you, you took that risk. You felt that, you know what, this, you know, even though you'd only been here a few months. Any advice for people? in that same kind of... Bet on yourself. If you have the chutzpah to come to Hollywood, which is one of the most unforgiving cities and show business, which is one of the most unforgiving industries that exists, and you're brave enough to come to Hollywood, then 
keep that courage up. Believe in yourself. And waitressing jobs, bartending jobs, those are the best jobs to get because they ha are the maximum financial return for the minimum responsibility. You know, the reason I used to live in the Bay Area, like you, <laughs> and um, one of the things that was the driving force that had me move to Los Angeles was I was working in a bar at the end of Sunnyvale Saratoga Road called Andy Capps. And, and the business was taking off, it was doing really well, and um, I was doing theater around in Palo Alto, and, um, and the people who owned the bar offered me a small percentage of the bar, which meant that I would have to, if I took that, then I would have to be responsible and do what, I, you know, I'm taking the job, and I can't go off and just do what I want, so I thought this was my first offer of of a really straight job that had longevity to it was, you know, a percentage of the bar, or betting on myself and coming to Hollywood with $45 in a proof sheet, and I chose that because it was, it was what I wanted to do. If you have a dream or a vision of what it is that you can or should be doing, you have to follow it. You have to, because the chief thing you want to avoid at any point in your life is regret. You have to try it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right. Yeah, and I think too anybody who's who's been around and looking for those jobs during the recession realizes that nowadays, I mean, I, you know, it was during the recession it seemed like you couldn't get a minimum wage job you were in a pool. You had to go on numerous interviews, you know. So I think people are so skittish nowadays, and I don't blame them. I get no, it I, because it's scary. Yes, it can you be know. scary. But the, scarier than looking for a job is putting, setting your cap for a career in Hollywood. This is hard. This is a very challenging thing. And as I said, if you have the nerve to come here, if you have the, even a modicum of belief in your ability to make it in any facet, behind the camera, in front of the camera, whatever it may be, um, you have to pursue it. You have to. I think even scarier is, is regret. Yes. And, and I think some people, you know, they, they don't, they're not there yet, so they don't see that time does fly by oh. and then, and, and regret is actually the scariest thing. Yes, not being able to pay your rent is very scary. Yeah but regret is, is also scary, so. Well, the, the other thing is, don't come here and rent a $3,000 a month apartment. You know, come here and no matter how old you are, get a roommate, take a studio, you know, live in a small place because all of your energy has to go towards what it is you're pursuing. And, um, and so you have to be sensible about it, you know? I mean, you can't go mad with, with this is one thing that I thought was amazing when I moved to Hollywood. Everybody spent all this money on a car because a car was, you know, you pull up to the valet and the car is, you know, tells them who you are. Well, you're just this far away from being a valet yourself most of the time as, a, right. as an actor, you know. Right. I mean, you might have to take a job like that. Yeah. So be smart about what it is, where you set yourself up, how you set yourself up, your expectations. Count, bank on yourself not the purse you carry or the car you drive. You know, believe in yourself.